Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam May Allah's endless peace and blessings Salawat and salam endlessly Be upon his beloved Prophet and his family His companions and all those who follow his guidance From Ummat al-Habib up to the end of the time 
All believers, Allah's order is to do our best to strive in the right path. Jihad al-Akbar, Jihad al-Nafs. The greatest striving battlefield of fighting is to fight your own ego. One day, the Prophet وسلم, was coming with his companions from a battlefield, returning back to the blessed city of lights, Medina al -Munawar. As he was approaching, he was telling his companions that we are coming from a small battle to a great battle. And they were surprised because they were just leaving the battlefield, coming to the city, peaceful place. Saying, Ya Rasulullah, what is a greater battlefield, greater jihad than the one we just returned from? <coughs> and he indicated to them that greater than meeting the enemy in the battlefield is to strive against your own ego, to control your own ego. Because the most dangerous, to us, even more dangerous, the enemy, outwardly enemy from people, jinn and shaitan, is our own ego, the nafs al-amara bisu, which is commanding and giving, all the time inspiring, giving wrong ideas against everything Allah has ordered, and making you a selfish person all the time to say me, 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 everything for me and forgetting about everything else only for yourself. Selfishness is against the teachings of Iman and Islam. Among the conditions of Iman mentioned through the holy hadith of six conditions of Iman and five pillars of Islam is not included. The hadith which I just mentioned in the beginning, لا يؤمن وحدكم حتى يحب لأخيه ما يحب لنفسه. This hadith mentioning and generalizing the reality of real reflection of what we say in the six conditions of iman. آمن تبلاه وملائكته وكتبه ورسوله وباليوم الآخر وبالقدر خيره وشره من الله تعالى والبعث بعد الموت حق. This reflection of real faith and iman is to not to be selfish, to love for your brothers what you love for yourself. This is the real state of reflection of the real Iman. There are two types of Iman, Taqlidi and <coughs> Haqiqi. Taqlidi is like a photocopy, something artificial. It's like a fruit which is made out of plastic. It looks perfect, beautiful in the table, but you cannot eat, you cannot benefit. Haqiqi is something, it's like a real fruit. When you taste, you can feel the sweetness of that fruit and benefit. This is a real Iman. And this is what Islam and Prophet وسلم, coming to <coughs> simplify and make it easy for us to understand that if you want to reach to the real Iman, we have to reach to the Taqwa and we have to be in struggle in this battlefield, which is an open one, all the time, day and night, up to the last minute of our life. And this is what is known as greater jihad, reaching to the highest stations because you continuously going against your ego. Never become selfishness and just thinking about yourself. All the time, whatever you're wishing for yourself, you're wishing for all the people, all Muslims and all humanity. What is the best for humanity? Allah granting the light of Iman and guidance. You're wishing for all of this. 
all the people. You don't just be proud and say, oh, I'm only the believer and right one, and everybody going to help her, and I'm, I'm that one who is going to paradise. No. This is not the character of the believer. Believer is in that a greater jihad with the Prophet Wasallam explained to the companions, and warned them also to be careful. Because if you lose this battle, you lose everything. Because the real Iman is not only enough to know the six conditions of Iman in your mind. Mind is important to have that knowledge. But that should be translated through your heart. And Taqwa is not here in the mind. Through the mind and intelligence, Shaitan knew everything. But because nothing reached here, which is the house, the place of containing the real Iman, real faith, and taqwa, piety. Prophet didn't say the piety is here, or here, or here, in all this outwardly symbols of taqwa. No. He said, a taqwa ha huna, indicating to the heart, the house of the Iman, the house which Allah saying universes are too small for me to contain me. Only the heart, the heart of the believer containing me. It means Allah descending his lights on the heart of the real pure believer who has Iman not in his mind, in his heart. A taqwa ha huna. The piety doesn't come just from intelligence and knowledge and from practices we do. No, we have to mean what we do. It. We have to know that we are doing out of love for Allah Almighty. And obedience, full obedience, not halfway following our own egos and half, other halfway trying to follow the teachings of the Holy Sharia of Islam. Dedicate 100% for Allah. Then you will see miracles changing through your life. Because when you reach into the real faith and Iman, you will be so much at peace with yourselves, and also people around you will be in peace and happy. Because Allah will send some signals through the hearts of His servants to say, I am pleased with this servant of mine who is pure through his heart, and no arrogance, no ego, no me, me, but only you, oh my Lord, only everything is from you. And he's grateful and thankful and thinking about everything to please him, that Allah making him to be pleased. Radiallahu anhu maradu This is an important message for all of us to think and contemplate. Are we in that greater struggle or not? Which is greater than meeting the enemy in the battlefield. And first starting from our own self to struggle with our own ego, our own nest. Then outwardly is coming the shaitan which also will follow us in every step. And he is expert in deceiving and cheating. But Allah through the Holy Quran explaining the position of the shaitan, he didn't say you are have, going to have greater jihad with him. He said, in the kaida who can daifa. With believers, he is so weak. His tricks is not going to work with us. One prayer, Audhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajim, will make him run far away. But that one which is in, within ourselves, that ego, is not going to run away. It's going to be there. This is why it's a constant struggle. And once you are in control, you become like somebody who has a powerful heart, a horse. But that horse is wild. If you are able to train, you will benefit and you will use him and he will take you anywhere you want. But if you're leaving without training, once you jump on it, he will throw you and perhaps destroy you. Like this is the power of the ego within us. The nafs which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warning through the Holy Quran in the nafs al bisu. Qad aflaha man tazakha. But it can be so much beneficial for us, for those who purify their heart, they're going to be the same ones. قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مُتَسَكَّرَ وَذَكَرَ اسْمَ رَبِّهِ فَصَلَّى What will happen when you are purified? How do you do that? Through the remembrance of Allah. 
through the istighfar, recitation of Quran. And once you reach that, the dunya becomes so small in your heart. قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ تَسَكَّ وَذَكَّرَ اسْمَ رَبِّهِ فَصَلَّى بَلْ تُؤْفِرُونَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةُ خَيْرُ وَأَبْقَى Because most of the people, because of our needs, <coughs> too much running towards dunya. But Prophet Sallallahu warning and saying, dunya jifa. The dunya is like a carcass, dead animal. Who wants to go run and eat from it? And to love her kilab. Sadaqa Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Aw Kama Qal And those who run to it, they are in the character of the dogs. Because no human being will go and run to get something from a dead animal to eat or drink. No one, even if they're giving you for free, you don't even go closer. <coughs> but this is for people who have wisdom and understanding, they will realize that running after dunya and cheating yourself and cheating others for the sake of getting something through deceiving and lying and cheating, it is like that. But what is importance of keeping this balance and how do we know how far we have been traveling and where we have reached with our position and our condition towards dunya and towards mawla Allah Azza wa because you could be servant of Allah and be most honorable and highest honorable stations even higher than angels but also you could be servant of dunya and you become lowest of low why you become so low? Because Prophet Sallallahu warning and saying about this Jihad al-Akbar mentioned through the Holy Hadith, he's also explaining to the companions with an example. Saying, there is a person who accompanies you, a friend. If you obeying and listening to him, he's going to humiliate you, make you dishonorable. If you disobeying and going against him and humiliating him, he will raise you and give respect and honor to you. It's a strange friend. Saying, Ya Rasulullah, who could be such a person, such a friend, such a companion, who when you are giving honor and highest respect, he dishonors you and takes you to the lowest. And when you go against and humiliate him, takes you to the highest. And Prophet is saying that is your ego, your nafs. If you are going against what is ordering to you to do bad and you're doing opposite to it, then you're going high. When you're listening, then you are going lowest of the law. Because you will go all the time against the order of Mawla, Allah Azza wa Jal. And you will be servant of dunya. And this is what's happening with us. From morning to evening, we're thinking, ah, oh, we are good Muslims, but we're forgetting about Allah. But you have to start. Once you open your eyes before Fajr, perhaps the Hajjud, if you can, say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, you're releasing yourself from one of the nuts with Shaitan. Professor Sala mentioning making, making three nuts on the ben, every child of Ben Adam, children of Adam, to control them for the whole day. When they wake up, the first night they release themselves from shaitan by saying Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. The second by making wudu. The third by praying. Then they are free. If not, he will make all their day miserable. And no barakah on what they do. If they don't wake with Bismillah, if they don't make their wudu, and they don't pray their prayer, then that day no barakah on it. This is why it's so important for us to remember and to realize that we have been created for the highest purpose, to be the most honorable in divine presence, but this can be achieved only through obedience and through following divine orders and commands of Allah through the Holy Quran and the Sunnah of Sayyidul Anam, Nabina Muhammad alayhi salam, Salatan Kadumu wa Tuhda ilayhi mamarra layali wa tulad dawa. May Allah grant for us the wisdoms and real understanding of divine commands and orders of Allah through the Holy Quran 
and the teachings and the ways and the sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad give us that wisdom, that enlightenment, that taqwa, that we are able to be in command, to be in control, to be in charge of our own nafs, our own egos, and become real believers, not fake ones, not pretending ones, to come to the real faith, real iman, which we will be dressed with lights of mercy, forgiveness and protection from divine presence through this life and for eternity. And we will turn to be <coughs> like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam describing his companions, Ashabi kan nujumi My companions are like stars in the sky. Each one has their own light in different parts of the world. Whichever you are following, if you are traveling through the night, you will find the guidance, you will find your way. Like this should be all the believers, all Muslims, whatever they are, they should be like stars, like companions of Sayyidina Rasulullah, representing the haq. Because Allah is describing this ummah, khayra ummatin ukhrijat nas the best of the nation, chosen to be among the people, to give witnessing, to give the message, the light of Iman, which should be reflected through our real faith, not the faith, not the plastic fruit which we are talking about, our condition in our time, because we just going through our mind, and mind sometimes can make you to be arrogant even if you know not enough to follow. Then the way to make ourselves in command and control of our egos is through taqwa. What taqwa and knowledge combine together, then you become like two wings. The pigeon cannot fly with one wing. It will fall immediately. Like this is the condition of us only with knowledge or only with understanding the outwardly teachings of the Sharia, with our piety, it is impossible to follow. May Allah grant for us the piety <coughs> and wisdom and knowledge which will benefit us through this life and take us for eternity and give us that position and maqam to be honorable, spreading the lights of Iman through this <coughs> places where, wherever we are with the best of the character and the best of the manners and Make for us, inshallah, among those who have husnul khatima. Ya Allah, biha, ya Allah, bi husnul khatima. This is the most important dua we should ask in every prayer, every time. Oh Allah, grant for us good ending. Because this is what matters. To have good ending, it means preparing through all your life in that greater jihad to fight all the time against your own ego, against your own nafs which is commanding for bad and changing to it to serve you and to do the goodness instead of badness and giving you highest honorable position and stations through this life and for eternity. May Allah grant for us to be among those who are in charge of their egos and nafs and make us obedient servants for him to follow his ways, his orders and commands and the ways of his beloved Prophet and Messenger Sayyidul Anam sent us a mercy for all creation, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Ameen, ameen. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidil awaleen wa al-akhirin. Wa habib rabbil alameen. Wa shafi'a al-munibin. Sayyidina Muhammad al-Nabi al-Umi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajmain. Ala in ahsan al-kalam wa ibn al-Ban nizam. Kalam Allah ibn al-Kil aziz al-Allah. Kama qal Allah tabarak wa ta'ala fi ahsan al-kalam. Iza quri al-Quran fastamu lahu wa ansitu la'alakum turham. Sadaq Allah al-Azim. الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد الكريم والصلاة والسلام على رسولنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين تعظيما نبيه وتكريما خامة شأن صحيح قال زرد قال محبرا وآمرا إن الله ملا صلونا على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه 
صلوا عليه وسلم تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا ابراهيم وعلى ال سيدنا ابراهيم في العالم حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد كما بارك رحمتك حتى على سيدنا ابراهيم وعلى ال سيدنا ابراهيم منك في العالم حميد مجيد Allah, 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 Allah,